Hello, my name is Monica Bednarik and I work at the Department of Linguistics at the University of Sydney. This screencast belongs to a series called Key Concepts in Corpus Linguistics. And the topic for this screencast is concordances. So, um, what are concordances? Concordances show every instance of a given word in a corpus with surrounding text. And like other corpus linguistic tools, concordances can be generated both for English and for other languages, as in this example, which shows some sample concordances for the French word pour from a corpus of French scientific texts. And if you have what is called a parallel concordancer, you can produce concordances for translated texts. In this example, you can see a search for the English word for, and at the same time, you can see the Galician version of the same sentence in a corpus of literary texts. Parallel concordances can be useful for cross-linguistic research or translation studies. How do you decide what to search for? You can use concordances for qualitative analysis of many different phenomena. So what you search for depends on your research question or hypothesis, but it can also be a result of examining a frequency list. If you're working with a raw text corpus, a corpus that is not annotated, you can search for a single word form like point, a combination of word forms, that is phrases or engrams, for example, I must admit, words from a common semantic set, for example, um, beef, pork and veal are from the common semantic set meat. You can search for words from a common grammatical category, for example, modal verbs like may, must, should, might, could or can, or words that occur in a particular grammatical frame, for example, a, something of. And you can also search for word formations, for example, words ending in ness or shin. And if your corpus is lemmatized, um, you can also search for a lemma, for example, the verb condemn in all its words for word forms. If your corpus is tagged, you can search for um, part of speech, followed by a particular word form, for example, adjective, terms, or educational plus noun. Or you can even just search for the part of speech tag without accompanying word form, for example, um, searching for all nouns in a corpus. So there's a lot of different things that you can uh, use concordances for and a lot of different searches that you can undertake. Now, it says here that you need a lemmatized corpus to search for a lemma, but in fact you can get around that by using the wildcard functionality, which I'll just briefly show you. So, in most corpus linguistic software you can use a star to stand for zero or more characters, and this example here comes from a corpus of news discourse. So if you search for work, followed by star in this corpus, you will get all words starting with work, including the different forms of the verb work like work and worked. But this type of search often throws up words that are unrelated to the lemma. Um, so for example, in this case, worker is a different part of speech and lemma to the verb work, although it belongs to the same word family. So in other cases, the words that you find through a wildcard wild search may be completely unrelated to the lemma. Um, so this is a limitation. You can also use wildcards to search for word endings. For example, a search for ness or shin generates concordances for all words ending with ness and shin, and these examples are from the same news corpus as before. Um, these are just some sample concordances for words ending in ness and shin from this news discourse corpus. Finally, you can also use wildcards to search for words occurring in a particular grammatical frame, for example, the star of. Um, as in this example, um, a star of. So um, again, uh, these concordances come from the same corpus, and what you can see is all the words that occur in the uh, grammatical frame a star of. So um, that's it. Thank you for listening.